Hey everybody, Michael here. Welcome to the YouTube channel for my global documentary series about urbanism, the life-size city. Today I want to show you an excerpt from the season 3 episode from Beirut. Now, Beirut and Lebanon are often in the news, but it is almost always for all the wrong reasons. Now, when I go to shoot in a city, we often need filming permits. The level of bureaucracy varies from city to city. And when we were going to Beirut, we needed to present them with a list of all the guests we'd be interviewing and all the places where we'd be shooting. We were given a heads up that we should not include one particular name on the list because otherwise the entire shoot could go down the drain. Now, what happens if there is a person in a city that the authorities simply don't want you to talk to? Yeah, you want to talk to them even more. Habib Bata is a journalist and he was my first point of contact when we were shooting in Beirut. He gave me the lowdown on what and where Beirut is. He explains to me in no uncertain terms the challenges that Beirut faces and man, they are unbelievable challenges. Now at the end of the segment, you can also think about the responsibility that star architects should have and yet that they ignore. Beirut is a playground for them, man, but they simply don't care about history, about archaeology. They just want to see their big shiny buildings. If you dig this segment, there are two podcast episodes with Habib Bata. I just simply couldn't get enough of this guy when we were shooting in Beirut. And they are on the Life Size City Urbanism podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. So remember to like this video and subscribe to this channel and we're off. Where does one even begin to discuss the urban challenges facing the ancient city of Beirut? Even though the civil war ended nearly 30 years ago, its repercussions have left permanent scars on the city. The bloody conflict that plagued Lebanon from 1975 to 1990 killed some 145,000 people, severely injured more than 100,000, and displaced over a million it essentially brought the country to its knees. The power struggles that led to the war are deeply rooted in complex and ever-changing alliances. It's not simply a sectarian conflict. Regardless of the cause, citizens were held hostage as bombings and bullets from snipers wreaked havoc across Lebanon. Beirut took center stage, acting as a dividing line between Muslims and Christians. Even though the city was able to rise up and re-establish itself as a thriving capital, it's difficult to say how long peace will last. Many of the people linked to the civil war are still tied to the government in one way or another. So the fight for power is far from over. But citizens are tackling their problems one day at a time, as one must in Beirut, despite the precarious cracks in the pavement and in their politics. The man, the myth, the legend. Good How you doing, brother? You. Good to see you. And you? Good. Good to see you. Welcome to Beirut. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Dude, so filming here, right? You know, ahead of the of the shoot, you know, there's a lot of permits we needed. There are sensitive topics that we're not supposed to discuss. And we have to have, have a list of uh, who we're going to be interviewing. And we were told not to put you on the list. So. It's too bad, yeah. right? I mean, they, they should view me as the best tour guide of the city. But, you know, they're <laughs> losing this great resource by blacklisting me because they don't want to hear the true story. Yeah. Habib Bata is an independent journalist who has been covering Lebanon for national and international media outlets for years. He is viewed by local and outside observers as someone who digs up the truth in the midst of chaos. He now runs his own news blog, publishing reports on Beirut that national media outlets would rather bury. We're right now in Martyr Square, okay? We're in one of the most historic parts of Beirut. It was the place that was uh, a great importance in the 60s and the 50s. Uh, it was a, a great gathering point for the city. These streets would have been packed with people. And so it was a real hub of the city. Yeah. Today, it's kind of like a highway. So when the war ended, there was this idea to let's rebuild this city. 
And the idea was we had a billionaire prime minister who was a big real estate developer. Oh, funny that. Sounds familiar. <laughs> and he basically took over the government of the country. He populated all of the government institutions with his staff. So the managers of his companies became the heads of government institutions for reconstruction. Their slogan was building the finest city in the Middle East. So what fine meant was expensive and unaffordable and really keeping the rest of the city out. Under Solidaire, the former prime minister's development company, heritage buildings were destroyed, making way for new developments. Suddenly, politicians had carte blanche to do whatever they wanted. And so they did. They created a modern, glossy downtown by expropriating homes and small businesses. And what happens when politicians suddenly and miraculously become developers? Grocery stores are converted into high-end restaurants. Apartments are sold off to oil magnates and wealthy expats. In short, the social fabric of an important economic and cultural district of Beirut was robbed of its integrity and its livability. The country of Lebanon went from a war-torn country, you know, with, with some resources to being one of the most indebted countries in the world. Yeah. That doesn't even provide electricity, water, uh, garbage collection, sewage treatment. Um, it's flushed straight out to the sea. There's no treatment of that. Yeah. And the reason that we can't provide basic services like electricity, water, et cetera, is because the government has no revenue. All of the government's money basically goes toward paying for this debt of reconstruction. So people are living on scraps, literally in this country, while these billionaires are erecting these towers of grandeur with the world's most famous architects. And this pristine, shiny downtown with high-end shops and slick architecture is anything but life-sized. Not only does it look like any other place in the world where rich developers have had their way, but pedestrians and tourists are being policed by security guards at every turn. We were indeed stopped several times while filming. In this part of town, the message is clear. Unless you're paying to be here, keep out. We're just kind of lingering in the heat here because uh, we're not allowed to film on this street. I have been um, harassed, I've been detained, I've been stopped many times in this city center and to the point where I don't really feel comfortable in this city being a journalist and trying to document things because they really don't want that kind of thing. Yeah. When they finally did let us in, it became immediately apparent why they were trying to keep us out. They don't want you to see, actually, that this city center is largely empty. It's largely going bankrupt. You know, billions were wasted here. They don't want you to look at all the empty shops. They price people out of even imagining coming to this part of downtown Beirut. Wow. So this part of Beirut is not for the majority of the population. They don't feel at home here. They don't feel welcome. Because if you have a family of five, let's say, and you come to one of these restaurants, you won't leave without spending a couple hundred dollars. And that's right, that's half the minimum wage of the country. So things just close overnight. I mean, look at all these empty places. Yeah. You can't even keep track of the openings and closings. There was a Starbucks here. Yeah. And there was also a McDonald's up here. They've taken out the McDonald's sign. And for a McDonald's and a Starbucks to close, I think that's a rare thing. Yeah. Um, and that really shows you the level at which um, there is no business down here. Yeah. More than, there are more pigeons, really, than people yeah, on are. the average day totally. here. What about the rest of the city? Yeah, I mean, I think that this was the first major real estate project in the country after the Civil War. And after this project got started, it influenced a lot of similar projects in other parts of the city. And again, it's the same kind of concept. It's, it's, it's the kind of neoliberal capitalism, the idea of let's just keep pouring lots of money into the city and trying to attract foreign capital instead of actually serving the people who live here. No crosswalks. Yeah, no, nowhere, dude. Jeez. So really not built for people, it's built for cars. Many of these new developments are being built on top of historical treasures. Refusing to stand by and watch the destruction of his history and his culture, Habib took it upon himself to expose what was happening to the public. I had always heard that so much archaeology was destroyed in Beirut, and I'd always seen these, these sites being excavated with no information to the public. And I took it upon myself to start investigating this topic. And once I started to dig deeper and find out that, you know, there's actually a lot of sources that have been destroyed, you know, uh, then I started to ask more questions and want to document this. So what I've started doing lately is actually whenever I see a construction site going up, 
I make it a point to try to get some images of that excavation. And so I, I do this work now really to kind of create a public record of the many excavations in Beirut mm -hmm. so that someday we can come back and ask, well, what happened to those ruins? So we can't hold them accountable if we don't know what we're holding them accountable for. Jean Nouvel, a very famous French architect, uh, wanted to build this grandiose tower and a mall, as if we don't have enough malls and hotel towers in the city. But while they were doing the excavation, they found really important ruins here. We're gonna try to get a look. Do you wanna try that? Do it. Let's do it. It's okay, guys, it's clear, it's clear, let's go. Let's go now before- Go. So this would have been a huge mall complex if John Nouvel had his way and That's the investors up. behind him. This whole site is really could be a wonderful site where people could come here and explore and learn about the many different levels and stages of the history of this really troubled city. But as we can tell, this site is closed and we have to beg for access. And it looks like any minute now he's going to pounce on me and I have to stop talking. You'll find these fences hiding ancient ruins all over the city center. Had things been done correctly with archaeological digs and careful preservation, the real estate ambitions of developers would have been kept in check. But no, no, no. Why save historical artifacts when you can slap up more condos and skyscrapers? I mean, that's one of the greatest ironies here is that this project is called The Landmark. It's saying that their hotel will be as important as these, you know, world wonders. And so you're destroying Roman ruins to make, you know, and, and comparing yourself to the, you know, to Rome. It's, yeah. it's kind of ridiculous. Holding developers accountable for their actions isn't only about preserving history. It's a way to reveal the truth about the way the city is mishandling development. And it clearly points out that Beirut doesn't only belong to them. It has stood here for thousands of years, despite war, invasion, bombings, and bullets. But without citizens like Habib, it will not withstand the greed of modern development and corruption. Fortunately, Habib is not alone in his fight. It's a very lively activism scene that are creating collectives and initiatives, whether it's for making the city bikeable or actually making the city more affordable, questioning really wasteful projects. And it's become a very uh, embattled city, I would say. You know, what they got away with down here 20 years ago, that can't happen again today. Today, every new project is contested. Mm -hmm. There are Facebook pages that start about, you know, a building that's gonna be torn down. Right. And so there's a new issue issue-based, issue-focused politics that's happening in Beirut right now, and it's a very exciting time. Mm -hmm.